I have. We're here at Sun and Fun. I'm Dan Johnson in the seat I love, and I'm talking with Randall Fishman of the Electric Aircraft Company. Uh, Randall, uh, we've looked at the ULS before, and uh, we just sort of touched bases on a few things. Tell me how it's been going for you since the last time we did one of our videos together. I think uh, I think that was last year here, the last time I talked to you. People love it. Every place I go, I fly at different airports, and uh, the response is great. This year here was a nice turnout. We gave out 400 cards like that. I ran out of cards. Excellent. A lot of guys really sound serious. Well, we had actually chase some people away in order to do this video, yeah. so. But I, mean, I really did have some guys. Really talk to some people had some guys that back three, four times. They're there with their friend. They're really asking the right questions. It sounds like serious guys. Is that right? Yeah. Excellent. Good for you. I hope you. So uh, uh, it responds well to. I mean, you know, you like it too. It's just like a crazy looking thing, and people like it. Right. Well, I'm an old soaring pilot, so. Yeah. Uh, electric airplanes are a buzz, literally, that's a pun I know, but they literally are a buzz for a lot of people. The trouble with electric is you're not going to be able to do two, four-seater, six-seater aircraft. That could be a while yet. But you can do this now, here and now, and you are flying it here. Have you had some experience with it at this show? Oh, yeah, well, you know, I've been flying it almost every day. I flew, uh, Monday we flew twice. They gave us a little 15-minute uh, spot of our own and we made a good video. Tuesday we flew. Wednesday was kind of funny. I didn't fly. Almost every day. Today I just flew about 45 minutes or an hour. All right. We're having a good time. Here. So tell me a little bit about the performance of the aircraft. And understand, folks, this is an electric-only airplane. There's no other engine here. Uh, there is, of course, natural air currents that can be used to uh, uh, get the aircraft up in the air. That's kind of the mission of the aircraft, is to be able to turn that electric motor off and soar. But tell me some stuff about the motor-on performance of the aircraft. Um, well, one of the things we can do, well, we do get a lot of glider pilots to come by, and I can offer it, uh, a folding propeller and uh, a little smaller battery pack for those guys. But if you get the full battery pack, we really get two hours of runtime without any help of lift. Wow, two hours. Okay, right. that's so quite you, a bit. You Most can just motor, been here you can just motor around here if you want. 30 minutes, 45 right. minutes like that. Even that's not bad, though that's okay too, but two hours, now you're talking some serious stuff. Well, we've been working on it since 07 when your wife Randy made you come over to see the trike. Look at your trike, yeah. yeah. So she knows I'm a trike guy, yeah, I, so I like the idea of that trike, but uh, uh, this is a very slick flying machine, and there's a reason why it's a slick flying machine, Randall. Tell us why. Uh, it's we want the, the idea of the of the project was to make a Part 103 ultralight electric powered motor glider that you could just get in and fly. You wouldn't have to build it as a kit make it legal. Right. Part 103 allows that. No pilot license needed. No end numbers needed. No medical needed, of course. And you can sell it ready to fly. And all the regulations can be printed on the front and back of one piece of paper, which is a remarkable thing in the world of aviation. Uh, I actually did talk to one. I reached out through the EAA and I talked to a fellow named Mr. Papard, who was one of the three one of the guys, guys who wrote that. Who yes, wrote the uh -huh. rule. Uh, and he was very nice. He went back and forth with emails. He, that yes, he feels it's the spirit of the rule, explained where the five gallons came from, was a balance between safety for the pilot and safety for people on the ground. Uh, and on that point, five gallons of fuel in a crash isn't much, but the fire possibility of that is so much greater than a box of a stainless steel box of batteries. So I feel it's much safer. And also, we used to fly the little two-cycle engines, remember, and all the, right, oh, the yeah, part yeah. 103s? They would just quit sometimes. Yeah. Even if they really weren't broken, but they're pretty the, reliable if you maintain them right. But boy, when they stop, it's just all over, and that's that. Yeah. Sometimes you get down, you're on the ground, starts right up again. Yep. So anyway, the electric is very efficient. Here when you do that, and under well, that's my, right. Under that's my arm uh, here one, is one of the two of the battery packs. One of the two and battery I got one packs. on the other side over here as well. So it goes out into this wing uh, root section. Yeah, it was section. designed to be in the in the wing stub. The bulkhead is right here, so the battery comes up to that, and we also. Uh, you, you got a little it, venting arrangement. You see a tube, yeah, this is the air out, and there's also air in in the front, so we'll okay. run air through the pack all the so time. So you keep it cool, because batteries right. can get warm. Well, I believe the key to making a electric uh, batteries, the lithium batteries safe and last a long time, is to keep the heat down. Keep it, keep it as cool as you can. You're not going to keep them cool, they're working. But uh, No, no, you really, we can keep them almost ambient. Is that right? right? Okay, cool. Because first of all, we're not working them as hard, because we have such a big battery pack. And lithium batteries were designed to discharge over a two hour period, which is what we do. Most guys, RC guys, they discharge in 10, 15 minutes. Right, right. Then they get hot. But we do it, and also we have an expensive battery pack, we want them to last. 
So if you discharge them slowly, you don't charge them too fast, you don't charge them too deep, discharge them too deeply, they last really long. So what, what, what is a, you know, uh, one of the costs of the aircraft is those batteries. They're right. not cheap, I know. Right. But there are people who say, well, it's, but you have to buy, in a gasoline-powered aircraft or diesel or whatever, you got to go buy fuel and you got to keep buying it, keep buying it, keep buying it. How long will these batteries operate for a typical user? Uh, we don't know. We only got a 110 hours on this, 103 hours on that. We don't have any lessening of capacity that we noticed, so that's a good sign. In that much time, you haven't even seen any drop right. off in the So recharge. we expect that it's going to get 800 cycles. Now, we, two hours. And if by a cycle, you mean a recharge. Right, but I wanted to mention that our full discharge is two hours, but we don't recommend that unless you need to. Maybe you go three quarters most of the time, an hour and a half. Okay. So we are expecting 800 hour and a half cycles, which okay. is a long time for that. Yeah, right. That's uh, if I can do the math that's quickly 12, in my head, that's 1,200 hours of flying. Uh, for most people, that is, yeah. Let's put it at 10 years. That'd be quite a bit of flying. Now, if you want so to 10 run... years of flying, no buying any fuel. Right. Well, if you had a gasoline engine in here, it'd add up to some part, some part of the uh, whole. And then the other issue is, if you had an aircraft with a gasoline engine. You have a lot more service issues. It's expensive. Right? You have the old road tax. Sure, you got to have oil. You got to have spark plugs, and that's a normal running rebuild. engine. And rebuild. then you got other things you got to do. The road tax used to rebuild in 300 hours. It was very expensive. It right. Five degrees. Right. 47. You use something like that in this. Right. You wouldn't get all the smooth and quietness, but you still have all that expense. So even though it's expensive for the batteries up front, it costs to run an hour and a half costs about 60 cents in this. Yeah. <laughs> So that's all it could. So if you amortize the cost of the batteries and you add in the cost, I believe it's less expensive. To so run let's put some in context on this for people that say, okay, great, sounds good, all of what you're saying about the length of the batteries and whatnot. When it comes time to say, okay, they're used up, you got to get some new ones now, to replace what's in here now in each wing road, what's it going to cost? The Approximately. Two, and that's today, that'll again, change in the future. 5,000 a piece. 5,000 a piece. So now, 10 grand uh, for the batteries alone. 1,000 a year. Yeah, but that's again that's 10 years of flying that's a thousand dollars a year uh, pretty easy to get that equivalent in gasoline at today's prices the other issue is uh, they keep saying batteries are getting better and for what we want specific energy density they're really not but maybe in 10 years we'll have better batteries just put them in the box well with all the auto companies and other people uh, yeah. working the angles uh, we got to believe they're going to get better because uh, other people with really deep pockets want them to get better uh, there's going to be a lot of energy on it. The only I issue about that is for cars, they're working with lithium iron phosphate, which is a very good battery. You can charge it fast, discharge it fast, abuse it, but it's much heavier. Yeah, yeah. So we, we, we even with this kind, if we can get that kind of runtime and cycle life, we're there right now. It's yeah, huge. right. It's here now. So that's the beauty of the light aircraft and electric power. Okay, and where can we get, we gave a lot of information yeah. here, Randall, but where can we go get more on the web? We'll put it up on the screen, just tell us what it is. Yeah, electroflyer.com, or you can go to Google and put in electric airplane or electric aircraft, and we come up at the top of the unpaid. Very good. Electroflyer.com. We've done stuff on Randall's aircraft in the past, including an electric trike that he did, the Boney that he did, and now the new ULS. You can see all of that, many videos, lots of other aircraft, all that's available on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks so much for joining Randall Fishman and me here at Sun Advice.